so you finish your playing career and coaching. You come as an assistant with the Marlies. You get some assistant time with, with the Leafs, then the head coach of the Marlies. Over the span of, what, six, seven years, you went from a green coach, a guy that was probably ready for it in many measures, but one that had been a professional hockey player, not a professional coach for a lot of years. And at the end of that tenure, you're one of the most highly coveted coaches in the sport. The summer you go to Edmonton, you are a top free agent in ways that many coaches don't ever get to. I mean, talk to me about that transition from, from a green coach to being very coveted. Well, maybe some of that all, I, you know, you, you get to these clinics and I always think it's important not just to pass along, you know, my story or, hey, here's a, here's a power play breakout that we work, uh, that we use with our, our team that maybe your kids can't execute. There's not much you can do with it. But the the, I, I think something that may strike home here is what happened to me right when my very first year of coaching. And it was a, a decision that we made, uh, my wife and I. So we had been, I had retired, and that was uh, at the end of, I can't remember what season it was, but it was rolling into one of those lockouts. And my wife's had a very successful Canadian acting career, and we were going to move to L.A. So we moved to L.A., and we had a bunch of homes in uh, Scottsdale, Arizona. Everything was great. Went to the gym every day, worked out. Beyond sun, the Sunset Strip there, Jody Foster would get on this side of me on a bike, and uh, uh, David Navarro would get on uh, the, the uh, bike over here. We'd have a chat. Life was good. And then my wife's uh, dad had a cancer scare. So we came back to Toronto. We're living here in the summer, and my wife said, I don't want to go back to L.A. And I said, well, if we're going to live in Toronto, I've got to find something to do. And lo and behold, a couple days later, I open up the paper and I see that Toronto Maple Leafs are moving their team back to, uh, to, to Toronto and they've let all of their staff go. So I picked up the phone. I called John Ferguson. He didn't have a coach yet. He said, why don't you come down and we'll have a little chat. And I had played against John. We were the, the, the same age. Had a good chat. He goes, once I get a head coach, I'll pass it on to him. I'm going to fast forward here because I don't want it to turn into too long. But what happened was is uh, they hired Paul Maurice. I didn't know Paul Maurice. He hired Joe Patterson. They did not want to add another assistant coach and uh, the organization. Paul did. Paul wanted to bring one more guy in. And at the meantime, my old boss, uh, Brian Burke, had called. He was hiring uh, Kevin Deneen uh, in Portland to coach Anaheim's farm team. And Burke, offered me three years at head coaching money to go to Portland to be an assistant. Unbelievable money, three-year deal, and I was sitting there waiting for the Toronto one. We, at first, it was about being close, uh, a little bit closer to my wife's father, but I could leave, she could stay there, she could work, do her thing, and see her dad. And Berkey was adamant. What are you doing? What are we waiting for? You got three years, you don't have the other job, what's going on? And I kept thinking was, and this is nothing against Kevin Deneen, but Kevin at the time had never coached a game yet. He was a brand new coach. And now, meanwhile, I had Paul Maurice over here who had coached, I don't know, six or 700 NHL games. And I thought then, I'm like, oh, how do I turn down this money? And I know Toronto made me this offer to just go, listen, he'll never take that. Where they offered me a one-year deal at basically for free. And uh, I said, thank you, I'll take it. And, and it was all because I knew I was going to learn more off of Paul. And if I was going to coach, I needed to learn. And even though I had played 16 years pro and for all these coaches, hey, coaching's different than, than playing. And my relationship with Watt, Roger, did I know a little about coaching? Absolutely. But I thought it was imperative to learn. And I turned down that money and I turned down that term and I went on uh, the one-year deal with Paul and it was probably the greatest decision that, uh, that I ever, ever made. Do you have a coaching philosophy or is that too simple or broad to, to say that? Yeah, I, I think it, it's, it, it's hard to put in, into a single phrase. I, I'm, a, I'm a big believer in, uh, like we all are, in team and the players now are different, though. You can call them the millennial players, where they're, you know, they're they're out there building their own brand a lot, at least at the NHL level. And but for me, I I use the the, the phrase to to the players all the time, like give yourself to the team. Now that doesn't mean you still can't have your individual. Uh, likes and your uh, individual ambitions, but for for me, for any orga organization to uh, to be successful, 
everyone, and that means the coach, uh, the assistant coaches, the manager, the, all the, the, the players, you have to give yourself to the team. And I, and I equate it to when uh, I was a player. I, like a, I had a great time as a player. I was single until I was 31 years old. I had a good run. <laughs> and I was, believe me, I was running and having some fun. And, and then I, I, I met Ingrid. And we got to a point where I gave myself to my wife and, uh, and to her. And the, the guys that are married, they, they understand it. The, the guys that are young and especially that are very, very good players, they don't understand that just giving everything you have to, to that team. But that's uh, first and foremost uh, on my list with the players. And, and believe me, it, it takes – that you don't hammer that home in a week, a month, or even a year. It, it takes time. It, it took us two full years here in Toronto with the Marlies to really get our, the culture of the, what, what I really believed what was important, and that was the, the key building block on it.